you know, I wasn't planning on rebuilding the rear axle in this Jaguar. It's out of my comfort zone big time. I was gonna get a later model complete rear subframe and just because it's got outboard brakes the the 93s through 96s have outboard brakes they're just easier I, I couldn't find one for less than three grand no joke so um it was kind of a thing that we had to do uh, the 288 gear set wasn't going to cut it we had to get a lower gear set and the brakes were shot that's why it cost 900 bucks to go to a jaguar dealership and get brake pads put in these stupid cars There we go. Oh, I hate these f Jaguars. Ah, look at that. I hate we had to stop the Jaguar project. I hate we never finished it. Cage can go back. The Jag rear axle is a Dana 44 center section. See, no shims. And although rebuilding a rear axle is not what I'm used to doing, it's just a step-by-step -step process. But there's a lot of steps. ba -doo. Parts from Yukon Gear and Axle. A 331 gear set, a master rebuild kit, and a yoke for a 1350 U-joint. Step one, install the new rear bearing onto the new pinion with the press. Step two, make a setup race for the housing so I can make it removable and use the pinion depth tool to determine the shim needed under the bearing race. Now this means some math. A calculated depth of 2.664 and 2.621, which is marked on the pinion head, means that we need 23 thousandths worth of shims under the race. And the new race and shim are driven into the house. Step three, pinion bearing preload. The Yukon gear set eliminates the crush sleeve and instead uses shims. And with 20 thou shims on the pinion, I check the load with an inch pound torque wrench. No need, too loose. So repeat step three, until I finally get a rotational measurement of 19 inch pounds. Now the specs between 14 to 19, so we're a little on the high end, but still good. Step four, the pinion goes in for good with the seal and the yoke. Step five, I toss the ring gear into my Franken cooker powder coat oven to expand it and then install it onto the factory limited slip differential. The bolts from Randy's come with spacers to make this gear fit. But the ring gear is too thin and we need to have a spacer machined because Jaguar. A road trip. Neely Precision knocked out a 316 spacer and surface grounded to make sure it was perfectly flat. And then back to the shop. Time for step six, backlash. I pulled the stock side bearings off the LSD with the cool removal tool from Yukon and make another set of setup bearings out of them using the die grinder. The spacer and ring gear is then installed using some red thread locker to keep everything tight. The setup bearings go onto the diff with no shims and the unit is dropped into the housing. I measure for shim thickness using some feeler gauges and with the diff back out, shims go under the setup bearings. And it all goes back in again until backlash lands between six to 10 thou. Once it does, it all comes back apart again. And I add 10 thousandths of shims to help with the preload and the new side bearings are pressed onto the diff with the shims under them. Step seven, I hope this is the last step. Everything goes back together again and the gear tooth pattern is checked with a gear marking compound. Now, two tips here. Mix the marking compound with some synthetic diff lube to make sure it's easy to spread and readable. And apply some pressure to the ring gear while rotating it to get a proper reading. 